Good morning. I welcome you to the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. It is a pleasure to be with you. The only thing that could make it better is if you are all able to be here and filling up these seats like we used to do. Um, That will happen to us someday, who knows when. Um, But I have a few announcements for us to keep us connected during this strange time. Um, First of all, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we have a Zoom coffee hour. Uh, The information you need to get connected with that comes in the weekly newsletter and also in the dialogue every month. So come and join us when you can. It would be wonderful to see you. Um, I, unfortunately, um, have been targeted again with a fake email address. Um, At least three people in the congregation reached out to me in the middle of the week that. They were being contacted and the uh, banner was blessings, blessings, blessings. Um, And I needed some kind of help and to contact them immediately. Please do not contact them. If you will look um, at the email address, you will see quickly that it is not mine. Um, Someone has made it up and is using my name. Um, So please disregard any strange emails you get from me asking for you to immediately contact me because they're not from me. Um, Another announcement, another opportunity for us to be together um, remotely is that the 2020 Red Kettle campaign is going on during the month. We have a few spots still available to fill in on July 30th. If you are interested in being able to do that, please contact Chris Maloney, and she will let you know with the exact times that are available for you to come in and ring the bell. The other piece that I want to let you know about is that the Peace and Justice Mission is putting together school bags for the upcoming year. Um, there is a week that a list rather that appears in our weekly newsletter. The contact people for that are Deb Jensen. Joan Martin and Sharon Cruel. Um, We will again be having communion today. We will celebrate the Lord's Supper. Um, And after these announcements are finished, that would be a good time to shut this off, to pause for a moment so that you can go and get whatever it is that you need to have communion and celebrate the Lord's Supper. You may use Oreo cookies and milk or Pepsi and chips or bread and wine, whatever works for you. Come and join the feast. We gather in the name of the Father, God, and Creator, the one who loves us and calls us into being, the one whose glory is reflected in a human being fully alive. We gather in the name of the Son, Savior and Lord, divine healer, whose power confronted evil and whose touch brought peace. We gather in the name of the Spirit, holy and powerful, gathering all into healing in the shadow of her wings, breath of God, fire of God's love. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and we do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith, hope, and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Good morning. My name is Janet Hagan, and I will be reading the scripture lessons for July 19th, 2020 online service for Lake Edge Lutheran Church. Our psalm is Psalm 86. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart to revere your name. I will thank you, O Lord my God, with all my heart, and glorify your name forevermore. For great is your love toward me, you have delivered me from the pit of death. The arrogant rise up against me, O God, and a band of violent people seeks my life, but they have not set you before their eyes. But you, O Lord, are gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and full of kindness and truth. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the child of your handmaid. Show me a sign of your favor so that those who hate me may see it and be put to shame. Because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. The second reading is from Romans 8. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who, subject, who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. 
The Gospel is from Matthew 13. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat, and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the, as the weeds are collected and burned up with a fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Let anyone with ears listen. Thanks be to God. Good morning. It is really good to be back here with you. Um, last week, we went on a field trip to Albrecht Park, and we looked at quite a few different plants, and we talked about all the ways that God has put seeds on every plant, and how actually those seeds in the plants that are all around the world are really little bits of God's love. I know that we tell you this a lot, and we should, but God loves you so very, very much, more than any of us can even imagine. That's how deep God's love is for us. But God loves us so much that those little seeds of love that we talked about last week are planted in us. And as those little seeds of love begin to grow and grow and grow as we get older and older, we have a job or a calling is what we often say about a job that we have for Jesus. And our job is to use that love that we've received from God to love the rest of the world. Now, sometimes that's kind of tricky because we forget how to be nice to people and people forget how to be nice to us sometimes. But the job is still the same. We are called to love as God loves us because when we're doing that, when we're loving the world, we're showing the world what it's like to live in God's love. It's pretty amazing. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the seeds of love that you spread all over the world. We give you thanks for the seeds that are in us, that they will grow and we'll find ways to show those around us how much you love them. All this we pray in your holy name. Amen. See you next week.
break the stone away when our hearts are cold warm them with the day when our hearts are lost lead us on your This Sunday, right where we left off from the Gospel of Matthew, we jump over the parable of the sower of the good seeds, seeds of love and hope, seeds of new beginnings. Into today's parable, we hear about a different sower, one who is referred to as being evil, the enemy, the one who sows seeds with evil intent rather than the intent to love. On the surface, it seems like Jesus is just giving us a warning, wants us to be alert. Alert so that we will know when to turn on our mental sorting machines. So that as we look at the world, we can say, oh, this one is lovely. This looks really good. I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to put it right over here. Ooh, this one? It doesn't look so good to me. I think I'm going to get rid of that one. I'm going to take it away so that no one is ever bothered by this again. Maybe you've caught yourself about the business of sorting people. We say things like, oh, she's a good apple or a good egg, or he's a bad apple. If we're honest with ourselves, We are drawn down the path of sorting people into good ones and not so good ones frequently. The temptation is there for us to be judge and jury, declaring ourselves who's in and who's out. Sorting the good and evil, it's pretty easy, right? The people who are listening to Jesus 2,000 years ago, had a key understanding about what it was that Jesus was telling him. They have a key understanding that we all need to know. Wheat grew from the good seeds. The unwanted plants growing in the middle of the wheat were most likely some noxious weed that looks a lot like wheat. It resembles wheat so closely that it's hard to tell them apart until both plants mature and the ears of grain appear. When it comes to the wheat, the ears are heavy, and they tend to drop just slightly as they reach maturity. The ears of the unwanted weeds, well, they just stand straight up. The differences are subtle, even when you know they're there. 
The master's slaves we hear about in the story are eager to go out and sort out those nasty weeds and to protect everything that's good. But their master says, stop. And then he cautions them. The master knows the problems of sorting and labeling how the wheat and the weeds look so alike. He knows that the good will be destroyed in their zeal to remove what's evil. And so he says, let them grow together, the good and the evil, until the time of harvest. And then I will send my reapers to do the collecting and the sorting. You see, it takes time to tell them apart. Even then, there are subtle differences. That concludes our botany lesson for the day, and now it's time for us to have a brief Lutheran lesson, which is, supports, which is supported by this text, I think, rather nicely. According to Luther, every human being on the planet, the whole planet, is both a saint and a sinner all at the same time. God declares that all of creation is good. Absolutely everyone is good. To emphasize just how good the good in us is, we are told that we are made in the very image of God. The goodness in us is divine goodness. Adam and Eve had that goodness in them. It is still there when they are issued out of the garden for breaking their covenant with God. They are the first glimpse of being saints and sinners at the same time. When found out, even then, it was difficult for them to admit the evil that was in them, although they were quick to point out the evil in the other. Today's illustration, again, is plucked out of creation, and it helps us to build our understanding of the intricacies of looking at what's happening in our everyday lives. And it stops us from thinking that we can definitively, beyond a shadow of a doubt, separate the good from the evil around us. When we know the differences between the wheat and the weed, we discover it's not so easy to sort out evil from good. We discover how evil can look so much like the goodness of God. Jesus is warning us, sounding an alarm. It's not the first time. God sent the prophets to lead the children of God out of the darkness, and the prophets were called evil. They were just the opposite. They were divinely good, sent by a loving God to illuminate the path and draw the children of God back into the goodness and the love of God. Too often, what we think is evil and needs to be pulled from creation and destroyed isn't evil at all. Rather, it is divinely good. The problem with evil, the problem with sin is this. It can be so attractive. It disguises itself as what is righteous and virtuous. It persuades us that we can sort out the good from the evil. We see this even as we examine the church history. The church has been fooled by evil, justifying and perpetuating a number of evils and then using the Bible as justification. Here's a short list. The injustice of slavery, segregation and separate but equal statutes and laws, the exclusion of women from ordination, the unwillingness to accept the LGBTQ community into our churches with open arms, the displacement and the slaughter of the first people in this country. All were and still are embraced by some divinely good by the people of God. The sower of evil 
is so smart. The sower of evil sees that the church is its strongest opponent. Our call by Jesus himself in this parable is not to be his posse, charged with devising and carrying out a plan to rid the world of evil. Hmm. Our charge is to face the hard truth that sin and evil exist. Sin and its evil cousin and divine goodness live in us all. Think about these. Who do you have trouble being around? Do you love them? Do we speak kindly about one another, even when we strongly disagree? Do we go to the neighbor we don't see eye to eye with and have a conversation? Or do we continue to talk about them behind their backs, hoping to destroy their reputations? And finally, half of all marriages in this country end in divorce. It's hard for us to be totally honest with ourselves. We don't want to see it, but evil is everywhere. C.S. Lewis, in his book, The Screwtape Letters, which is made up of 31 letters exchanged between a senior demon, Screwtape, and his protege, Wormwood, they discuss how to lead a mortal toward our father below, or the enemy, away from our father above. Wormwood learns the safest way to hell is to gradually use refined subtleties such that we humans don't know what's happening to us. The sower of evil is crafty and patient. I tell you these things, not to be judgmental, because I am sure the same evil resides in me. It's the truth none of us want to embrace. Our presence in the world as Jesus' disciples is not to get rid of evil at every turn. Jesus tells us that's God's job. Our job is challenging, sometimes difficult, often rewarding. I like the way that Caroline Lewis, a faculty member from Luther Seminary, talks about it. She says, God, out of divine love, calls us to be good in the world, to live the gospel, to be light, to be salt, because Jesus says that's what we are. This should be good news to us. Jesus calls us simply to be. To be the good in the world with full awareness of what resistance will be. To be light when darkness will surely try to snuff us out. To be salt when blandness and conformity and acceptability are always the easier path. Amen.
unity with one another and the whole of creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of the harvest, you sow Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church here and throughout the world to be both attentive and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, that our witness may be faithful to your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all space and time, your whole creation groans in labor pains as we long to return to our normal way of living. Hold us in the hope of your promised new beginnings. Renew the earth, the sky, and the sea so that all your creation experiences freedom from the long-lasting impact of pollution and poor environmental decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the nations, teach us your ways that we may walk in your truth. Mend the fabric of the human family, especially now when there is greater awareness of the injustice our black and brown brothers and sisters experience. Guide us by your mercy, by your grace, and by your steadfast love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer and are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair and all who suffer in any way. We especially remember those on our prayer list, all those who work in the food industry and those who work in law enforcement. We remember our own, Liz and Peggy, and those we name in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the call committee as they work to call a new settled pastor for Lake Edge. We pray for those who cannot get the rest they need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of life, those who died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We pray the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trouble and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you.
and the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.
Thanks be to God. We live in the peace of Christ. Amen.